Lethal Company. <laughs> A horror game that has taken the world by storm out of absolutely nowhere. The game is hilariously funny and is an absolute joy to play. One of the best parts about the game is the retro art style and the graphics. But I wondered, what would it look like if I made it a little more realistic? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be taking Lethal Company monsters and making them into more realistic versions of themselves. <laughs> Now, without further ado, let's just go. The first monster that I'm going to be recreating is the coil head. The coil head is kind of like a weeping angel. Basically, it only attacks you if you are not looking at it. So when you're staring right at these things, they won't move in. But if you look away, you are screwed. <laughs> so the first thing I did was mask out this thing's beautiful body and then put in this nice tan color just as a placeholder. Then I put in some nice concrete on them because apparently, according to their lore, they're made out of concrete for some reason. I then just made some basic shadows to let it have some shape. I used a human's body's muscular system for reference. Nah, I'm just kidding, I didn't do that at all, I just winged it. All jokes aside, I just used this coil, I put it in behind his body, and I warped it into place to where it wasn't bending. After that, I took this mannequin head and I cut off its neck. Then I took these stock images of cracks, put the blend mode on overlay, and just stuck them on there. I used a soft round brush and faded out the edges to make it all mixed together. I then repeated those three steps about 30 more times. I then added these little red bits that he has in the game, which I thought at first was blood, but it turns out it was fecal matter. I'm just gonna keep saying this is blood because I don't want to think about that. I just used a red hue saturation layer and a mist brush and painted in on the spots that I thought would need it. I used a layer mask to mask out the parts of the concrete that the cracks were touching just to make it a little less smooth. After masking out the rest of his cracks, I decided it was time to add the little screw thingies he has. So I grabbed the screws, shrunk them down, and jammed them into the cracks. I did this for all the rest of the screws too. I think there was like five in total, and it wasn't too bad. I then masked out the part of the screw that was like injected into the body, and that looked really good. I did the exact same to the rest of them, and then I added some shadows. And finally, I decided to move on to the face, and and to do that, I used this zombie. I clipped the zombie to the mannequin head and just put it in the place I needed it. Now we're gonna fade out the parts that I do not need, leaving only the mouth. I then corrected the colors, except for his teeth, I left them white. Now, that was a decent base, but I needed something for the eyes. I grabbed another zombie picture and used his eyes for it. Once I faded out all the excess parts, this actually looks surprisingly good. In the game, its eyes are completely black, so I made my versions completely black as well. I added some shadows just as a little final touch to the face. Then I realized I forgot to add the ears, so I had to add the ears in too. I thought the body didn't look cool enough, so I had to find this picture of another walking dead zombie, and I saved that. I clipped the zombie's body to the coil head's body, and I put the blend mode on overlay. This already added a ton of nice new texture, and I hadn't even made any adjustments yet. Once I was happy with the torso, I decided to do the exact same thing, but with the legs. I masked out the parts I didn't need, and goodness gracious, this is gruesome. Apparently it wasn't enough for me though, because I decided to add even more blood. To do this, I just put the blood on the blend mode of multiply and maxed out the parts that I didn't need. I then connected the rest of the head to the coil because at the moment it was just floating. I then decided we finally need a background so I grabbed this brick wall, I flipped it, and I changed the color to make it gray just like in the game. I then added a bunch of pipes because for some reason there's a bunch of those in the game and I don't really know why. I made them darker and then added a nice little blur to them to match the background. I added a bright white light to the right side of the coil head. I ended up changing the color later in camera raw. I then made them a little bit darker just to match the rest of the scene, and then I started on my favorite part, highlights. This actually took me a very long time, so if you guys would like and subscribe for me if you enjoyed the video, I'd be very appreciative of that. After that, I used a camera raw filter and moved about every single slider you possibly could in there. I changed the highlight color to this nice yellow, and I think that gives it such a better tone. And this is what our final product is. I actually really like how this turned out. I think it really captured the essence of Lethal Company, but it still has my own little spin to it. There's a lot of detail, and it's extremely gory, but I think it looks pretty good. Tell me in the comments if you guys like it. The Bracken, the most popular Lethal Company monster, and for good reason. <laughs> this guy likes to hide in the shadows and come out to kill you whenever you least expect it. Whenever he does so, he takes your body and he brings it into his room. Now that we have a nice overview of what the Bracken does, let's just get into it. The first thing I did was grab this reference photo and just scale it up to size. Once I had that in place, I started masking out its beautiful body. After I had the shapes masked out, I used this rusty metal texture and put it on there. Using the warp tool, I warped the metal around his head to make it look more curved. I put the blend mode on multiply, and that looked pretty good. I did the exact same thing for the body. Then I started adding some shadows, and that started giving it some shape. This shadowing actually really helped to make it look more rounded and less flat. 
I then added a new texture to it just because I thought it was a little too perfect. I then put in his eyeballs, which are literally just white dots. I put some shadowing in under and beside his eyeballs just to make them look like they were shrunk into his head. Then added a nice bright white glow because why not? It just looks awesome. Now I needed to add some highlights to go along with that glow, which I just painted in. Now I'm taking these little leaves and masking them out one at a time and putting them on his back. I tried to follow it just how it is in the game, but at the same time, it doesn't really look good like that because the proportions are all wrong. So I just kind of winged it. Once they were all in place, it was time to add some shadows to every single one and this took forever. This might be the the most boring part but it's also the most important part so I have to do it. Then I decided it just needed a little bit more so I decided to add some blood. I erased the parts that I didn't need just to keep it on the leaves. And when I say I added blood I mean I added a crap ton of blood. After adjusting the shadows a little bit more I decided it was time to add a background. To do that I added a bunch of fog. I mean a lot of fog. I faded them out just to make them look a little less prominent. I also made a nice bright light source up at the top for the highlights. I went with red because, you know, it's like creepy and stuff or whatever. I then just painted on some nice base highlights. To do this, I was just using an exposure layer. I then took my hue saturation layer and painted over the exposure layer again. I also added this brick hallway because, you know, why not? It looks kind of cool, so I kept it. I darkened that up a whole lot to match the background. I drew in some nice little cuts on the leaves just to make some imperfections. After all these cuts were finished, you know we have to finish this out by adding a camera raw filter to it. So I took this thing into camera raw, moved about every single slider you could possibly imagine, and this is what our final product looks like. It looks pretty cool and it's actually quite creepy. I'd say a little more creepy than the coil head, but you guys can decide that in the comments. On that note, that is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one. Oh, and Merry Christmas.